The Gulfstream G2 was originally designed to be a corporate transportation aircraft. It was a business jet. It was a, it was a wonderful one at that. But NASA took the airplane and completely gutted it of all the interior appointments that you would expect to have in a business transportation airplane. And in the cabin, we had instead a very large computer. That computer uh, turned the airplane into a fly-by-wire test and training airplane that allowed it to fly exactly like the space shuttle. In other words, it could come down at a 20 degree angle. We could put the landing gear down, the flaps down, put the engines in reverse thrust while still in flight to come down at that very steep angle that the space shuttle did. And then we would practice the flare and the actual touchdown. Now what's interesting is we didn't actually land the G2, but we stopped our descent at 32 feet above the ground because that's exactly what the astronauts eye height would be in the real shuttle. It was a marvelous and very high fidelity trainer to teach us how to land the space shuttle. Well, I think every pilot who's ever flown the T-38 has a love affair with it. It's just a magnificent flying airplane. The flying qualities are first tier. That is right up there with any of the first line fighter aircraft that we have in our inventory, even today, and even though the T-38 was first designed more than 50 years ago. Uh, it, it's propulsion, it's power, it, it's uh, performance is stellar also. You just can't help but love the airplane. And that's part of what makes it such a good airplane for NASA astronaut training. Uh, we come, the military pilots, come uh, to NASA uh, wanting to maintain the proficiency that they developed in the, uh, in the military forces, and the T-38 gives them the perfect tool to do that, whether it's aerobatics, performance, uh, uh, formation flying, uh, instrument training, uh, flying in bad weather. The T-38 gives you the opportunity to practice all of those uh, and maintain your flying qualities and your skills, which is what NASA hired you to come be uh, when they hired you as a pilot astronaut. And the other reason it's good is that it's a two-seat airplane, so you can combine a pilot with a mission specialist astronaut and let them train together and, and do exactly the same kind of tasks that they'll do in the space shuttle. Reading checklists and backing each other to make sure the right steps are done in the right order. Uh, exposing yourself to high G's, such as you'll see in ascent and space flight, we can do that in the T-38. Uh, formation flying has a lot of analogies to rendezvousing with the International Space Station, for example. So there's just a hundred different ways that this airplane is one of the most important NASA astronaut training devices. The T-38 is a timeless airplane. It was, uh, it was born and bred as just one of the second generation, that is, after the first generation of fighter aircraft, were designed in jet fighter aircraft, they realized, hey, we need something that we can train our new pilots on. It is just about as difficult to fly as the fighter airplanes that we're going to ask them to immediately graduate to. So the T-38 was designed to combine high performance, marvelous maneuvering capability, uh, be simple in terms of its systems so that it will be reliable, but also to challenge the new pilots to develop those skills that they would need to then go to the Century Series fighters, the F-100, 101, the 102, all the subsequent fighters of magnificent performance that we depended on in the Vietnam and sub subsequent era. So that's why that's its place in history. And even today, uh, the airplane, in addition to being used by NASA, is still being used by armed forces around the world. The T-38 was used by the Air Force Thunderbirds as its primary demonstration aircraft back in the 70s and the 80s. So this airplane has been everywhere and done everything, and, and maintaining its heritage and its history is, is very valuable for the Space and Rocket Center and for all of us. I believe having these two airplanes is really going to leverage even higher uh, the Space and Rocket Center's assets. You can't see it right now, but we're almost standing right under the Space Shuttle Pathfinder. We have the solid rocket motors, the external tank, and the Space Shuttle Orbiter itself all brought together is in the real space shuttle stack. This is the only place in the world that you can see it all brought together in one place. Now to surround that one-of-a-kind display with the Grumman G2 shuttle training aircraft and the NASA T-38, it'll just be the icing on the cake for something that you can see nowhere else. And I think it'll be a big attraction for the Space and Rocket Center. You were asking about the anecdotes about flying the airplanes, and there's a there's hundred of them out there because astronauts, the uh, pilot astronauts, would spend 15 hours of flying time per month, which was really one work, work week out of each month.
flying the airplane. Usually we would be going to the Kennedy Space Center from Houston, for example, or we'd be going out to Edwards Air Force Base or the Ames Research Center. It was a marvelous training tool because you could do half a, train, half a day of training in the simulators in Houston and then jump in the airplane and go to where you needed to be for the afternoon meetings. And often you could still get home for a late supper at night back in Houston. So in that regard, it really, it really expanded our ability to be at different places in a magical way and that we could get home the same evening. Uh, Don Thomas and I, for example, uh, we flew three shuttle missions together, all on the space shuttle Columbia. And we probably have together a couple hundred hours. Um, myself in the front seat, he in the back, us learning and training together as a crew member uh, to fly the Space Shuttle Columbia on our various missions. 